The drama that unfolded in the royal family of Nepal in 2001 shocked the world. A beautiful love story ended with the collapse of a dynasty that had ruled the country for three centuries. Although the outcome of this catastrophe was predicted by astrologers three decades before the events, how did the sincere love of the Crown Prince of Nepal become the cause of fatal events? Watch the video to the end to find out. Let's get started. After the birth of Nepal's Crown Prince Dipendra in 1971, court astrologers made an ominous prediction. They predicted a long and happy life for the prince, but on one condition. If the future monarch did not marry before the age of 35, Otherwise, the entire ruling family would perish, including the current king, Marendra Shah, and his wife Aishwarya. The celebration of the birth of the heir to the throne lasted 11 days. All the while, the baby's father was thoughtful and his mother was depressed. This is because astrological predictions are taken very seriously in Nepal. The queen trusted them implicitly. She did not want to believe that a cute baby sleeping peacefully in his cradle could destroy the whole family, but she took the prediction as a real danger. The mother surrounded her son with double care and love. As Dipendra grew older, she allowed him literally anything. The queen tried to make him happy, but perhaps she made things worse. The boy grew up in an atmosphere of permissiveness. The result was already evident in his teenage years. According to court biographers, by the age of 14 he had dozens of girlfriends with whom he led a promiscuous adult life. When the prince was 17 years old, thunder struck. An event that made Queen Aishwarya petrified with horror. The heir to the throne had decided to marry. His chosen one was a girl of the same age from an aristocratic family. Naturally, the prince's parents did everything they could to prevent the marriage. Remembering the dire predictions of the astrologers, they sent their son to the other side of the world, far away from the potential bride. On the pretext of getting a sound education, Dipendra was sent to London. Here he entered Eton College. The calculation of his parents was right. The radical change of environment and surroundings made the boy forget his first love. He plunged headlong into a new life of student drinking and fun-filled nightclub parties. <laughs> Young Dipendra spent so much money on entertainment that even his monarch father, who owned an entire state, was stunned by the size of the bills. On the other hand, the son's rambunctious life was seen by his parents as a harmless prank. Much more important, they thought, was that in London he lost the desire to marry. They were cruelly mistaken. A year after the move, a meeting took place in the college library that proved fatal for Dipendra and the entire Shah dynasty. The Prince of Nepal walked into the library and saw a beautiful girl reading political science at a nearby table. Dipendra was amazed because all his previous girlfriends had only thought about boys, outfits and entertainment. He was even more surprised when it turned out that the girl, Diviani, was his countryman. She was also an aristocrat and belonged to the Rana family. It should be noted that the Shah and Rana dynasties have been competing fiercely for the throne of Nepal for several centuries. Throughout history, the animosity between the families has often turned into a bloody feud. However, as in the case of Romeo and Juliet, it was not strife between Dipendra and Diviani, but true love, which is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for many. Their relationship looked perfect. Diviani introduced Dipendra to classical music. Holding hands, they went through the entire opera repertoire of Covent Garden. The prince, in turn, instilled in the girl an interest in sports, Together they practiced karate and even played football. The young people simply found each other and enjoyed their relationship. They were young, beautiful, and romantic, and at the end of their education, they had an inheritance and a bright future. Most importantly, Diviani and Dipendra knew that all the joys of their future life would be shared by the two of them. As you can imagine, the boy-girl relationship grew into much more than a college romance. They decided to get married, despite their parents' prejudices based on astrologers' predictions. Back in Nepal, the first thing Dipendra did was walk into his father's office and blurt out, I want Diviani to be the queen of Nepal. King Birendra was stunned. Not only was his son about to marry in defiance of the prediction, but he'd had chosen a bride from a warring family. 
that being an experienced diplomat he did not immediately refuse his son. His father had many conversations with him and brought many arguments against the marriage that had nothing to do with astrology. It had to do with the internal political situation in Nepal. In the end the monarch pretended to compromise. His son was allowed to date Deviani, but the prince could not marry until he was 35 years old. Dipendra was happy. After all, he no longer had to hide the relationship. In fact, their relationship became a civil marriage and lasted for more than 10 years. The lovers counted the days until they could finally marry and be officially married. In 2001, they both turned 30 and had only five years left before the ban expired. Then something inexplicable happened. Dipendra's parents made a decision behind his back. They found him a wife among the Nepalese nobility and offered him a hard choice. Either he would forget his love for Diviani and marry whomever they chose, or the king would strip his son of the title of crown prince. In that case, the throne would go to his younger brother. Without saying a word, the shocked prince left the family dinner where the ultimatum had been delivered. Ten minutes later he returned. The man had changed into a military uniform and in his hands was an automatic weapon. What happened next still boggles the minds of Nepalis and the rest of the world. The prince shot and killed his entire family and some distant relatives who had gathered for dinner. The prince then tried to shoot himself, but he did not die immediately. He was taken to a hospital where he spent three days in a coma. Ironically, it was during this time that he was proclaimed king of Nepal as required by law. Dipendra wasn't destined to enjoy the status of monarch. He died without regaining consciousness, taking almost the entire Shah family with him. A total of 10 people were killed. Several other relatives were wounded by Dipendra, but managed to survive. After this tragedy, Nepal was ruled by the prince's uncle, Gyanendra. The new king ruled for only seven years, after which the monarchy in Nepal was abolished and the country became a republic. As for the prince's beloved Deviani, she had been in a deep depression for several years, the girl blamed herself for what had happened, since it was she who had insisted on the marriage. But time healed her mental wounds. Six years after the tragedy, Diviani married an aristocrat from the Singh dynasty of India. It is not known as she was happily married, but the woman gave birth to a son and outwardly everything seems normal in her family. The dark prediction of the astrologers has come true and in a terrible way. The 300-year-old Shah dynasty collapsed because of the prince's love story, which bears a striking resemblance to the plot of Romeo and Juliet. Against the backdrop of the Nepal incident, Shakespeare's plot seems vanilla. Unfortunately, life often turns out to be much sadder than book stories. What do you think about this sad love story? Let us know in the comments. Subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you enjoyed the video. See you soon.